blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. A blessed day. Today's lesson is about probability sampling techniques. At the end of this module, you are expected to identify what probability sampling technique is and its types, determine the type of probability sampling technique applied in sample scenarios, and examine the sampling technique used in other researches. In a normal classroom setup, teachers usually use an index card to randomly select students for oral recitation. This is to avoid bias selection of students. The same goes for sampling. The researchers use random sampling to avoid being biased in the selection of the sample for their study. Probability sampling. The selection of components of the sample that will give a representative view of the whole is known as the sampling technique. Selecting samples can be biased or unbiased. This lesson focuses on selecting sample unbiasedly. This is called probability sampling. Probability sampling refers to a sampling technique in which samples are obtained using some objective chance mechanism, thus involving randomization. Please take note that if your population is less than 50, go away from probability sampling and 2. Your sample size should be at least 30. Probability sampling techniques give all elements of the population an equal chance of being selected, but using this technique may consume a lot of time and effort of the researchers. After having your target population and sample, it is time to decide how to select the sample of the study. There are different types of selecting samples under probability sampling. According to Prieto, Naval, and Carey in 2017 and Faltado et al. in 2017, here are the types of probability sampling techniques used in quantitative research. Number one is the simple random sampling. This is the basic probability sampling design in which the chance of selection is the same for every member of the population. To conduct this sampling technique, the researcher should ensure first that he or she has the complete list of all the elements or the sampling frame of his or her target population. From the list, the sample is drawn so that all elements have equal number of chances to be selected. Here are ways of selecting samples. First, by utilizing a table of random numbers. Two, by using the lottery techniques or the fishbowl method. Three, by using digital random picker application. Let's have an example. The researchers target respondents are all grade 12 students. Suppose there are 800 grade 12 students and he only needs to select 470 as the sample. Using simple random sampling, the researcher puts the 800 names of grade 12 students in a box and then pick only 470 names to participate in his study. The second probability sampling technique is the systematic random sampling. It is a sampling that follows regular intervals from a list. It has specific steps and procedures in doing the random selection of the samples. With this sampling technique, it may spread the selected samples evenly across the entire population than simple random sampling. Here are the steps to follow in doing this technique. 
Number 1, number all the participants in the population from 1 to n, where n is the total population. 2. Compute for the sample size. 3. Divide the population to the desired sample size, or population divided by sample size equals number interval. 4. Randomly pick a number between 1 to the value you obtain from step 3. 5. Start counting from the number you get in step 4 using the interval you get from step 3. Let's take a look at this example. For instance, the population size of your study is 500 and you come up with 100 as your sample size. You decided to use the systematic sampling technique in your study. The next step would be 500 divided by 100 equals 5, meaning your interval will be every fifth in the list. For step 4 or for the next step, the number you obtain in first step is 5, then you must choose one number from 1 to 5 as your starting point. Let us say you choose number 3. Next step, since you choose number 3, then you are going to start counting from number 3 and followed by every fifth in the list. Therefore, your respondents will be the students listed as number 3, 8, 13, 18, 23, until it reaches the maximum number which is 500. The third probability sampling technique is the stratified random sampling. The population is divided into groups called strata and then simple random sampling is applied in selecting samples from each group. This is the best random sampling method when the researcher wishes to have a representative sample of each or of the population. For example, the target population of the researcher is 1,200 junior high school students with a desired sample size of 800. The researcher gets the number of students per level and then divide each number of students per level by the total population of 1,200 and multiply by the desired sample size of 800. Using this illustration, it clearly defines that the researchers would get 233 respondents from first year high school, 200 respondents from second year high school, 187 respondents from third year high school, and 180 respondents from fourth year high school. Example, first year equals 350 divided by 1,200 times 800 equals 233. For the second year, 300 divided by 1,200 times 800 equals 200. Third year, 280 divided by 1,200 times 800 equals 187. For the fourth year, 270 divided by 1,200 times 800 equals 180. The fourth type is the cluster sampling. The largest scale surveys use this cluster sampling method. It is used when the target respondents in a research study are spread across a geographical location. In this method, the population is grouped into what we call cluster. Simple random sampling is used in selecting the cluster. Example. Mr. X wants to explore the performance of LGU employees across various parts of NCR. Mr. X creates 16 clusters of LGU units. He then randomly selects 5 clusters to conduct the research. And all the employees uh, of the selected clusters are included in the study. The fifth type is the multi-stage sampling. This refers to the procedure as in cluster sampling which moves through a series of stages. Example, 
an organization intends to conduct a survey to analyze the performance of smartphones across Philippines. They divided the entire country's population into cities or clusters and randomly selected five cities out of all the cities. And then the organization randomly picks only one barangay in each city and filters all the people in each selected barangay who use smartphones. That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.